So we're going to an expired listing, which means that it was previously listed with another agent, came off the market, they fired their agent, their words, not mine. They were unsure if they could get the house sold. So when I got to them, they basically said that they didn't feel like they could get the house sold because the market wasn't good enough. And after a few questions, we determined that there probably was a market for their house and there was an opportunity to get it sold. So we talked about pricing and now is the follow-up meeting to that. So I initially sent out the marketing strategy along with pricing. So we've discussed both of those things already. Not always the case that it would go in that order. In this case, they were very reluctant because of the way it was mishandled before. So there was a lot of questions and a lot of cynicism, which makes sense. They wanted to make sure that they weren't just getting sold by someone who was gonna do the same thing that happened to them before. Essentially two interactions with the client, both over the phone. This is gonna be the follow-up appointment at the house, basically just to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what we're gonna to do to get it sold. And then at the end of that, they'll have the opportunity to sign the paperwork and hire me. Let's talk about this expired listing stuff a little bit more, okay? Usually an emotional process. So it's typically like, I love the home, nobody else seems to love the home at all. And that becomes a frustration piece that usually goes towards the agents. It's rightfully so a lot of times because the agents take on the price, they take on the marketing, they take on the entire story that's being told about the house. And when it doesn't sell, the, the seller takes it personally. You can't help but be agitated about that because people are rejecting you at a high level or rejecting your price, rejecting the whole house, right? So here's the way that we approach this a little bit differently is gonna be about data, right? So there's information, there's data that shows and supports what something should sell for, if it should sell. Right, and all of those things is typically what I find a seller can find a lot of comfort in knowing what that is. So what kind of data do we look for? Well, number one, how many showings did you have before? How many offers did you receive? What did the agent tell you in terms of the feedback? This is all data that's subtracting your emotion from the process and telling me a story to determine whether or not something's likely to sell or not. Because everything around here has a pace that it will sell at and it feels a certain way based on those metrics. So if we take it and we determine that you got 100 showings and zero offers, that's one really interesting story, right? But if I put your home on the market and we have three showings and no offers, which is unlikely, but just as an example, or if your home goes on the market and has 45 showings with five offers, then obviously that extreme example, you know exactly what to do with that, right? But the point is, it's not about typically what the agents make it about. It's about numbers, it's about the metrics. And if you're measuring the right things, then you can determine what to do next in order to create a different result. One of the things that's uh, not widely known, I find, that about 60, 65% of homes will ever sell. So I think that there's some level of thought from a consumer that every home sells and that all agents are the same. And so if you put your home on the market, it will sell at some point. If you've ever met someone whose home didn't sell, you'll see a total opposite side. So it teeter-totters, where someone goes from 100% confidence that their home can sell to 0%. Because if it's with an agent or if it's on the market, it'll sell. And if it doesn't, then it will never sell. They go all the way in terms of emotions, all the way up and down on that, right? So what, I'm, what I want you to know is that agents are very different the way they handle things. And they're very different, not just from a marketing standpoint, but from a communication and from a resolution standpoint, from problem solving, which is really what selling real estate is about, is solving problems, right? So getting it sold is a problem if it's, if it's not as simple as it needs to be to, for anybody to sell it, then what we do typically is come in and have a different approach to solving and figuring out what the problems are. We're going to shore up all the communication problems between the seller and the agent. We're also gonna shore up any communication issues with consumers and with other agents that might have interest in the home. And then we're going to completely start fresh from a marketing standpoint to figure out and isolate what is wrong and what's causing the home not to sell. This was the, this was the room when I listed the home. This is what it looked like. So what's really great about this, if you look at this photo, I mean, if you see these photos together, it doesn't even look like the same space. You can see the black door. The angle's incredibly different too, right? They got complaints before about the tile. 
and they got complaints about the space and the windows, we really wanted to highlight the windows and highlight the tile. And so you notice something that what I hear often from the clients is they think it's strange that we bring the furniture in like this. But if you look at the room compared to the way it looked before, you can tell which person looks like they're gonna sell their house, right? Let me give you an example in the kitchen too. So these are the old photos from the other eight. That's, that's the same room, by the way. All right, so now there's the kitchen. Let me pull up our kitchen. There you go. So this person here, we didn't change the price. We changed the price by $3,000 to get the home sold. Home was listed for $428.9. I listed the home for $425 and sold it in a couple of weeks. It had been on the market for four months. This was the kitchen of the person that thought they were doing everything they were supposed to do to get it sold. Once we came in and told them what they really needed to do to get the home, look at these floors. Look at the difference, if you can see the difference in the color of the floors, and look at the counters in the backsplash. It's the same kitchen, incredibly different, the way that this looks versus the way that looks. We were just talking about an example as a team about a home that had expired and there was only one bathroom in the home. And it was in a neighborhood where people expected it to have more bathrooms. So the seller was pushing down on the price, but the home still wasn't seeing any of the marketplace because when you search for it, it wasn't showing up. So then we have opportunities to market the home with two bathrooms by either A, putting in a second bathroom, or B, suggesting that you could put one in for a certain price and then selling it for that price. In this case, what we did was market it with a second bathroom that wasn't there, but we advertised that we were willing to solve that problem for the buyer with money, right? And so we were able to sell, save that deal and get the home sold for the client. And of course they were happy about that. The previous agent just came back with, nobody wants to buy it because there's only one bedroom. Well, that's not solving a problem. That's just kind of staying in the one problem that created it. So it's very different. Sometimes it requires that I come in and lower the price. Sometimes it requires that I just come in and have a different conversation with the consumer about the product. And sometimes, of course, there's just a little bit of luck involved in the timing of things. You get things relisted, you change the price a little bit and you can get it sold. And even when that happens, it's going to appear like it's easy. So it goes, I believe, from the consumer's mind to this is incredibly hard. It's never going to happen all the way to this is really easy if you handle it properly. And if I do my job right, there weren't a lot of problems. It should almost feel like, wow, I can't believe I paid that much for that service and there was no problems. I think other agents complicate it and feel like it should be difficult in order to justify a high commission. It's my belief that a consumer should pay a high commission for no problems, uh, even though that can be confusing sometimes for people. So, so if you've had a home on the market and you tried to sell it and it didn't sell, or if you know somebody who's tried to do that, there's really an important thing that we're trying to distinguish in, in terms of whether or not your home should sell. So it comes down to motivation. Right now, because of the state of the market, we really have a huge opportunity to separate the need from the greed. And the people that need to sell a home and need to move somewhere, we can typically make a little bit more progress versus someone who just has, we'll call it a greedy approach, but an unmotivated approach, meaning a specific price is what you'll take, anything less than that, then you have no motivation to be anywhere else. So when I'm looking for expired listings or trying to talk to people that are thinking about selling their house, nobody wants to be necessarily described as motivated. But in reality, you have to have a certain lo level of motivation to get your home sold. And so we're looking for that. Let's distinguish that doesn't mean desperate. That doesn't mean we're going to give anything away. But it means, will you do what it takes to get the home sold? And then in exchange, will I do what it takes to get the home sold? So if an expired listing is ever gonna have a chance to sell, we have to evaluate those things first.